I'm going to be using an all black sketchbook and two different kinds of marbled contact paper for my hardcover. All links will be in the description below. I'm going to be using chipboard for the base of my hardcover. When you make your measurements of the width of your book, make sure to subtract at least one eighth of an inch for your book to easily open and close. You want to take the actual measurements for the length and width of your spine. For the elastic, you want to measure one and a half inches down, one inch over, and the width of your elastic. Mine is a quarter inch. Now you want to start filing away at all the raw edges of your cardboard or chipboard. This gives a really nice flush look to the pieces as well as when we go to put the contact paper on, it doesn't look all bumpy. When filing near the corners, file on either side, not on top of the corner. We don't want them to be rounded, we want them to stay nice and sharp. Make sure to file down any slits for the elastic band as well on either side. Go ahead and lay down your contact paper or whatever paper it is you're using and begin to kind of get a rough sketch of where you want it to be placed. For mine, since I measured it an eighth of an inch, I'm going to make sure that each piece is at least an eighth of an inch away from each other. You'll see here that I measured only one square away, but the best thing to do is take into accommodation the width of not only the board, but the book. So give yourself at least a half an inch all the way around and go ahead and cut it out. To prepare the board to go on top of your paperback, go ahead and take an X-Acto knife and begin to score the chipboard. By doing this, it gives the glue a better adhesion to the surface of the chipboard and make it more durable. The scratches don't need to be deep, just go ahead and lightly cross-hatch back and forth across each other. Try to get as close to the edge as possible. Go ahead and prepare your Mod Podge with a small little brush. You want to try and be as generous as possible with this glue. You don't want it to be overflowing where it's going to gush over the sides, but give it enough surface area where it's going to adhere nicely to your board. You'll notice here that I did not put my board the right way. Make sure that when you apply your chipboard that the marks are facing down against the glue. Measure it up as perfectly as you can. Remember that eighth of an inch away from the spine. Once you have it placed where you want to, go ahead and grab your binder clips and place one on each corner. Once you have that all set, flip it over and do the same on the other side. When you're inserting the elastic, just poke it through with the X-Acto knife and pull it down about an eighth of an inch. And then place something heavy on top. Once it is all dry, go ahead and remove the heavy object and check out your book. 
you want to make sure that the glue adhered nicely and that there's no gaps in between anything. If all looks well, go ahead and start removing the binder clips. I did a slight little test of my elastic band to see if it was in snug. Really inspect to make sure that everything is in place and that it's not going to just fall off. If you see that there are any gaps, go ahead and fill them in with a little bit of glue. A very important step with hardcovers is that you do not glue the spine to the actual book. If you do that, you will not be able to open and close your book properly. What I did here was peel off the paper backing on the spine. That way we can have the middle section of our book ready and it's easier to place the rest of the contact paper. You notice on my paper that I made small notches for the spine as well as the corners. Go ahead and lay down your contact paper and place the spine onto the sticky adhesive. Line it up as best as you can, and then press down to make sure there's a good adhesion. Once it's in place, remove any binder clips if there were any excess and begin to peel off the backing for the front cover. Go nice and slow, because I know the paper on contact paper can rip very easily. Flip over the book, and now we are going to make the crease where the spine and front cover meet. This is the gap that's going to allow the book to open and close. I'm using a bone folder. You can use any flat edged object like a ruler. Once you have that crease set, you're going to begin flattening out and getting rid of any air bubbles. Of course, if there are any, Carefully lift up that contact paper and begin again. You're not going to get it on the first try, so don't worry. Push out any air bubbles as you go along for a nice, clean, flat surface. Open up the book and begin folding in all of the flaps. The rounded edges for the corners make it easier to fully wrap around the corner without it being exposed. Go ahead and use your bone folder or flat object and flatten out to make sure there are no air bubbles. The corner near the pages of the book were overlapping, so I had to trim away some of the excess. Making round edges for the corners of the book makes it really easy for all of the paper to fold over and not leave any corner exposed. You will repeat this process for the back of the book as well, ensuring to fold down all the flaps and pressing out any air bubbles as you go. For a more professional look, we'll be adding another piece of contact paper to the inside, measuring the length and width of the book and subtracting an eighth of an inch all the way around. Once you have those pieces cut, go ahead and peel off the backing and slowly start placing the contact paper where you want it to go. Again, you won't get it the first time. It is really sticky. Just take your time and be sure not to go too fast, otherwise you can rip the contact paper. Once you have it placed, go ahead and grab your bone fold or flat object and press out the air bubbles as you go along. Don't place it down all at once because it can make it really tricky to get out those air bubbles and cause creases in your contact paper.
flipping to the back of the book, we're going to repeat that same process. However, I did something slightly different. Instead of peeling away the entire paper back of the contact paper, I only peeled it halfway. That way it's not going to stick to the book completely. Once I have it placed, then I peel the rest of the paper away. Again, make sure to really get all of those air bubbles out for a nice professional clean look. I noticed that my measurements were a little bit off, so I cut that same contact paper to fill in that gap for the front and the back. This is just an extra step that I took to make it more professional looking, but it is not necessary. If you got the measurements right the first time, even better. On my book, the ribbon was actually placed on the back of the cover, so I had to compensate and make sure that I did not cover the ribbon, otherwise it wouldn't function for me. And you are all done. You have a nice cover, a nice flyleaf, all the pages work, you can now use your little book marker and your elastic band and you're all set. You've officially made your own hardcover. I'd love to see your recreations. Just make sure that you tag me in the photo on my Instagram. I'll leave you the link to everything down below. Thanks so much, and if you have any questions or comments, I look forward to reading them.